Hi everyone, welcome back. This is uh, another bio application like I promised a couple of tutorials ago. And here we're gonna focus on de-arraying TMAs, tissue microarrays. The last couple of videos were focused on shoal analysis and this is the second bio application. And uh, as I mentioned, de-arraying TMAs here and in the next one we are gonna continue this. Basically, after de-arraying, we are going to use the high-resolution individual core images to perform analysis. And we're going to do use deep learning for uh, nuclei segmentation and then extract intensity from, for example, the, the ground channel, you know, at uh, these nuclei locations. So, uh, but, but one step at a time, let's actually focus on de-arraying part. And I am, again, by the way, if you want to know when that video gets released, usually two weeks from today, uh, but you may not be watching this uh, today, whatever that today is when I release this. So if you want to be notified or if you want to keep track of my videos, please hit the subscribe button that you find down below. And of course, if you are feeling extra generous, you'll see the little thanks button. Go ahead and explore it. Okay, now coming back to this topic, I am going to use QPath software uh, and then also Python. Now, if I'm going to use QPath, you may ask, why not just use QPath for everything? Well, it may not have all the tools you need for customized analysis that you may be planning for your individual course. So if you are using Python, it gives you much more flexibility if you work with individual high resolution cores, right? So that's why I'm going to first use QPath to identify the locations of these cores and then download the locations as a text file and use that text file as input to extract these cores. So that is the goal for now. And let's go ahead and jump. Uh, actually, let's look at QPath and uh, see how we can actually extract these cores. Now, for those of you who don't even know what I'm talking about when it comes to tissue microarrays, a quick note, think of this as performing tens or hundreds of experiments in one go. So these can be up to three, four, five, or even 600 individual cores or individual tissue samples on a, on a single slide, like the one that you see on the left-hand side here. Yeah, you have a lot of these, and each one can be a separate experiment, right? I mean, you put different molecular markers in each of these, and then you see how the tissue actually looks like under the microscope, and of course, you analyze them using Python or using QPath or any of these software tools. So this is a TMAs in a nutshell, tissue microarrays. So uh, yeah, with that information, let's go ahead and open the uh, one of the whole slide image files in QPath. So what you see on the screen is QPath, and this is version 0.4.0, if I'm not wrong. I don't know what the current one is. I have had this on my system for the last couple of years, so they probably have a newer version, but I don't see how things would change that dramatically compared to what I have. Okay, let me go ahead and drop the SVS file, and SVS is, from, uh, is collected on an Apero system. And uh, this is again a compressed file that actually has uh, multiple levels of information stored in a pyramid structure. I did an entire uh, couple of actually tutorials a while back on using OpenSlide to load SVS files and to extract different levels, right? Level zero is your high resolution image at the highest resolution. Level one is slightly lower, level two is lower and so on. Okay. So as soon as I open the file, it says, hey, which one of these is this? We're not using QPath for a lot of things today, other than identifying the core, so uh, it's okay, although it did a good job in suggesting what I should pick. Let's go ahead and apply. The image is ready for analysis now. The only analysis I want to do is TMA, so let's click on TMA, de-arrayer. De-arrayer, you are trying to de-array here. Now, the way the coordinates work is, as you can see up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are all the columns. I think I have 16 of those, and the rows are alphabetical, A, B, C, D, E. I think I have uh, up to L, A through L. And each core diameter is about 1.2 millimeters. Uh, that's okay. You can adjust these if it, did, if it doesn't detect uh, things in the right way. So let's go ahead and run this. You should see, normally it's faster. I'm doing multiple things on my system, on my tiny laptop, so it's a bit slow. So uh, things are usually faster. Hey, it did an amazing job here, except it did not pick this up because that's the 17th one in this, in this uh, row, which means you can actually say 17 here and ignore all the empty ones. But I'm happy with 16. I don't care about the last one. 
And also maybe it did not pick up some of these because there isn't enough contrast. You can go ahead and manually add it. You can manually move tissues. I mean, these, these circles here to do minor corrections. I'm okay with this because all I want is the center. And also I'm gonna define how many pixels around that center I want to extract later on in my code. So this is okay. I am going to close this. And this is exactly why I'm using QPath. I tried coding this in Python where I tried to use cluster algorithms. I tried a couple of others. I, I couldn't do a good job in detecting all. It worked okay as long as you have good contrast in these cores, but if you don't have good contrast, even QPath seems to struggle, but QPath is very visual. It, you can go and add cores if you want. You can remove cores and all that stuff. That's why I like to use this. Otherwise, you can easily code it in uh, Python uh, if the contrast is good. Okay. Uh, now, let's go to measure and show TMA measurements. It's going to show a whole bunch of measurements. Let me expand this so you can see exactly what information is stored. It's storing the, first of all, the thumbnail, image, the name, and is it missing or is it not missing, right? I mean, most of these are not missing except for some of these positions, but that's not useful information for us. The two uh, or three pieces of useful information here that we need is the name, because I want to save these cores based on the name, a1.png, a2.png, and so on, and the centroid x and y, right? So these two. So we know where the centroid is, and then we can extract the cores. That's it. Okay, now let's go ahead and save this. We are going to save this as a text file, so let's just save this as core positions from QPath, and save it, and I'm going to overwrite the one that I had from earlier. And that's it. I don't need QPath anymore. This is all I need from, from QPath. Uh, that's it. Now, this is the, the few lines of code. And again, this should be a pretty fast video because we just extract the coordinates and we just use our code to save individual cores. That's it. So, uh, and I did add some notes of whatever we just did up here. So if you, you can just look for the link to the code down under the description. Follow these and you should be all good. And uh, we are going to use open slide library. And for that, you go ahead and pip install. Why do we need open slide library? Obviously we are trying to open a .svs whole slide image and this library provides all the tools for us to do that, uh, to, to work with that file. So pip install open slide Python and just like other, I mean, unlike other libraries, you're not done when you just do pip install. You need to download the Windows binaries if you're working on a Windows system or whatever system, you know, look for the binaries, download it, and you need to point at that location. Usually it's in C users, admin, Anaconda 3, environments, and so on. This is where I stored it along with the open slide library. So it's easy for me to find it. And that's exactly the path you provide down here when you do open slide path, C users, admin, so on. I just put a variable username because I use the same code on a couple of other systems that I have where the username is different. So I just wanted to make things flexible, that's it. So once you have this path, it knows where the DLLs are located for open slide and it should hopefully work. Okay, after that, it's all pretty much the standard stuff, right? We are going to name or, I mean, provide the location of our uh, SVS file. It can be SVS, it can be CZI, it's just uh, it's just an O uh, whole slide image in this case, right? And uh, of course the core positions, the one that we just downloaded, the TXT file from QPath, and the spot size, 3000 pixels is what I selected here. In fact, I started off with 5000 pixels, but I started to see some edges, you know, some pieces, uh, you know, some pixels from the surrounding course. So I'm like, okay, I just want the 3000 pixels where I have the core, that's it. And this is something, an experiment you have to do on your own SVS images, by the way. Where is my output directory? And then all the patches are stored in that output directory. And right now I should not have anything in my core images and uh, input images. This is my output directory, right? So I got nothing and let's keep an eye on this as we run this code. Okay, and then it's just about a bunch of print statements and we are extracting level zero, which means the highest resolution image is what we are downloading as a PNG. And then, uh, and then uh, here is our X and Y. And from each row, remember the text file that we have, let's open, oh, God, I'm here just a second. 
let's open our text file. We already saw, you know, what in, in the, uh, there you go, core positions. So you have your name, you have, uh, you know, the A1 is what we want, X and Y positions is what we want, right? So that's exactly what we are getting here, extracting the, the label, which is A1, A2, A3, and so on, X and Y. And within surrounding this X and Y, we are actually going to get 3000 uh, pixels around it, save it as a PNG. That's it. Let's run it. And let's open uh, core images and input images. Now I have some print statements here, so you can see A1 is extracted. So it's actually going through each of these. Again, this is slow only because I'm doing a million things on this system. And I also have Google Chrome open. I should have closed it for, it sucks all the resources. Okay, so A1, A2, A3, A4, blah, 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 all of these. And, uh, and let me open, for example, A1. You can see, so we are downloading this at, I mean, we're saving them at its native uh, resolution, each of these images. And uh, where is it? Uh, it's only my different window. So let me drag it. So you can see how the image looks like. It's 43% right there. So if I actually go to 100% full resolution, this is where, this is how it is. Now you can see all the nuclei, the DAPI signal, uh, not DAPI, this is, uh, this is H, right? I mean, this is not a fluorescence image, this is a bright field. So hematoxin is uh, what you have here. I, in the next video, let's actually go ahead and separate the stains, the blue versus brown and pink, if we have any pink, uh, so we can actually use the blue ones, for example for uh, nuclei segmentation, and then brown ones for intensity information from these nuclei. So that's what we're gonna do in the next one. So please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Actually, let me stop this before it fills my hard drive. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel and, uh, uh, and stay tuned for the next tutorial. Thank you very much.